Hi, Els here, and today we're going to continue with long-term construction projects with expected losses, both the calculation entries and the financial statement presentation. Here's the question. In 2016, we're going to use the same chart process that we used for 2015. We'll be using the information for the end of 2016 that was given in the question, so be sure you've downloaded the question from my Dropbox. The link is below. All right, let's get started. First, remember that we would only do the chart at the end of the year, after we've made the other three entries. Let's do all those entries first, because they are made continually throughout the year. Yes, I know for purposes of this question, we're actually doing summary entries, but normally, the company would make these entries as they occur throughout 2016. First, let's record the costs incurred on the project. You'll notice that this information is the costs incurred to date, but that's the total cost for 2015 and 2016 together, $63. We have to calculate the costs incurred only in 2016. We do this by subtracting the information from 2015 and 2016. If we're looking for only the costs incurred in 2016, it would be $63 minus 42, which would be equal to $21. Those are the costs incurred for only 2016. Let's make the entry. You'll notice I've already got all the accounts listed down. That's because the accounts are similar to 2015. So we've got a debit to construction in progress for $21. We also have a credit to materials, cash, accounts payable, you know, all the additional accounts that we would use throughout the year as we are incurring costs, $21. Now we have to record it in the T account. You'll notice in the T accounts, I've placed the opening balances from the prior year. CIP already has an existing balance of $44.80 from 2015. Accounts Receivable has a balance of $3. And Billings on CIP, I forgot to put the opening balance in there. That would be a credit of $38. And again, that comes from 2015. Let's do the entry that for 2016. We said CIP increased, debited, $21. The other side was the miscellaneous accounts, which we're not tracking for purposes of this question. So let's go back to the entries. What did we bill the client? Again, we have to calculate that for this year only. In 2016, we have billed a total of $58. That includes both 2016 and 2015. Therefore, in order to calculate the amount that we billed only in 2016, we deduct $38 from last year from the $58 total. In 2016, we billed them $20. Let's do the entry. When we build the client, we would debit accounts receivable $20. We would credit billings on CIP $20. Let's update the T accounts. Accounts receivable $20. Billings on CIP $20. Now we have to record the cash that the client has actually paid. Again, we see the total cash collected to date. So the $54 includes the $35 from last year. We've got to deduct the $35 from the $54 in order to get the amount of cash that we collected in this year, $19. Let's do the entry. Cash collections. Debit cash, $19. Credit accounts receivable, $19. Let's update the T accounts. Accounts receivable goes down, $19. Again, we're not tracking the cash account because there's too many entries that are going in and out of it. So we're just going to update the accounts receivable. Now that we've recorded all these entries that have occurred during 2016, we're standing at the end of 2016. Remember, we wouldn't have the information about 2016 until the end of the year. We can now complete our chart for 2016. For the purposes of the chart, we actually need the costs to date. So we're going to be using the information from our original question in order to update this chart. Cost to date, $63. Remember, that's the total for 2015 and 2016. Estimated costs to complete are simply the costs that we expect in 2017. And in this case, it's $21. Estimated total cost to complete is the addition of these two numbers. Therefore, the total estimated costs are $84. The next step in the process is always the same. Compare the total estimated cost to the selling price of the contract. Total costs are $84. And the selling price is $80. That means that on this construction contract, we'll have a loss of $4. What are we going to do about that? This is an example of a construction project that has an overall loss, meaning that overall for this construction contract, we expect to lose money. Let's talk about what happens because of this. In construction, there are two types of contracts. 
One is a normal construction contract that results in a profit at the end of the period. For those types of contracts, we always use the same method in order to calculate the revenue. We use percentage of completion. A good example of percentage of completion would be 2015. That's because in 2015, we actually had an overall profit on the contract of $5. We calculated that as $80 minus the 75. Percentage of completion method recognizes revenues, expenses, and gross profits equal to the amount of the progress made to date. That's why we use the percentage. However, when we find out that a construction project is expected to have an overall loss, like now in 2016, with a loss of $4, then the cost recovery method must be used. Key here is the word expected. We have to use the cost recovery method because the realization of profit at the end of the contract is now unpredictable. The cost recovery method is also used when there is significant uncertainty about the ability of the client to pay their scheduled payment. Say, in this case, if our customer for the building were not paying on time and they appeared to be in financial difficulty. What exactly is the cost recovery method? Under this method, you recognize the costs from the period and also recognize revenue equal to those costs. Let's give an example. If we had costs of $30, we would recognize revenue up to the $30. The end result? A gross profit of zero. This method is also called the zero profit method in some textbooks because the costs equal the revenue, so the gross profit is always zero. That defers all the gross profit until the completion date of the contract. In addition, losses expected on an overall contract must be recognized immediately. Why? Remember that reporting financial information is all about providing useful information to decision makers. If the current building project with our client is expected to have an overall loss, then this is information that the stakeholders in ABC Construction would want to know now, immediately rather than later. The reason we recognize 100% of the losses now is because the value of this information to our stakeholders regarding their future decisions about ABC construction. Note there is an issue with the cost recovery method. This revenue recognition method is highly biased in that revenue is recognized as late as possible. It does a very poor job of reflecting actual performance and expected cash flows over the contract period. Its use is justified only in the face of significant uncertainties. Right now, we're expecting to lose money. That's uncertain. It's a significant uncertainty, so we have to use the cost recovery method. Okay, let's go back to our example and see how this will impact our calculations. First, we calculate the percentage complete. We do that by taking the 63 and dividing it by the total estimated cost, 84. The result, 75%. That means according to the costs, year-to-date costs, we are estimating that 75% of this project is complete. We now use the 75% and multiply it by $80, the selling price, so that we can figure out what our year-to-date revenue is. $80 times 75%, our year-to-date revenue, $60. In order to calculate the revenue for this current year, we have to deduct the prior year's revenue, $44.80. The revenue for the current year is, therefore, $15.20. What's our current year's costs? Let's flip back to the question so we can see this. Current year's cost, $21. Gross profit for the year, a loss of $5.80. Now, we just finished the chart and we can see that our loss is $5.80. However, the overall contract is a loss position, so we have to recognize 100% of that loss immediately. Is $5.80 the total loss on this contract? and we know it's not, the total loss on this contract is $4. So how are we going to correct this? We compare the current cumulative position to the required loss and make an adjustment. Let's figure this out. I'm going to do this as a step-by-step -step process. Step one, calculate the cumulative gross profit on the contract. Cumulative means all prior years. So we've got 2015, we had a profit of $2.80. In 2016, we had a loss of $5.80. Therefore, our cumulative gross profit is a $3 loss. Step two, compare that cumulative gross profit to the required gross profit for the whole contract. $80 minus $84 equals $4 loss. Now calculate the adjustment necessary in order to recognize 100% of that loss. Negative $1. 
we need an additional loss of $1 in order to ensure that we have the correct cumulative loss of $4. This means we need to increase our cumulative loss of $3 to the $4 to get a total loss equal to what we expect, a loss of $4. There are two ways that textbooks generally handle this. Method one is you'll be asked to increase the current year's costs. Note that our loss when we used our actual costs of $21 is too low. In order to increase the loss by $1, we can increase our current period's cost by $1. That would make our cumulative loss equal to $4. Let's take a look at that. If we increase our current year's costs, we would get a bigger loss. Revenue is going to remain at $15.20 but we're going to adjust the current year's costs, $21, plus the $1 additional costs we need, $22. Now, recalculate the gross profit, or in this case, the gross loss. Let's recalculate our cumulative loss to make sure we have the proper $4 loss position. Let's update step one. 2015 would remain the same, $2.80, but 2016 would now go to $6.80 loss. Our cumulative loss would no longer be $3. Instead, it's sitting at $4. Excellent. By increasing the current year's costs, we've wiped out the profit from 2015 and recognized 100% of the loss on the contract. We know this method works. What adjusting entry would we make at the end of the year? We'd do a debit to cost of goods sold for our updated costs, $22. We would do a credit to revenue for the appropriate amount. $15.20. What about the difference? We would credit CIP for $6.80. Let's look at our T accounts to see what this would do. There'd be a credit to CIP of $6.80. The total in CIP, $59. Total in accounts receivable, $4. Total of billings on CIP, $58. Let's look at the balance sheet, also called the Statement of Financial Position, and the Income Statement at the end of the period. All right, so let's look at the impact on the financial statements. We're going to start with the current asset. Cash, cumulative, would have been $35,000 for 2015 and $19,000 for 2016, $54. Accounts receivable, $4. For inventories, CIP, $59. Billings in progress? $58. Revenues in excess of billings, $1. Total on the balance sheet for assets, $59. Now, let's compare that $59 to the actual revenues to date, which are $60 according to our chart. We are $1 too low. Why? Because we adjusted CIP by $6.80 loss instead of $5.80 loss. That's why there's a difference between the cumulative revenue and the total amount of assets on the balance sheet. Let's look at the income statement. Revenues from long-term contracts, $15.20. Cost of goods sold, the adjusted, $22. Gross profit, a loss of $6.80. Let's look at both the statements together. Remember how in 2015, we were able to see that the total amount on the income statement was equal to the revenues from the long-term contract. Again, it doesn't look like it's the same anymore, but if we looked at only 2016, with no adjustment, we would see very quickly that there's still a connection. Let's just look at 2016 by itself. I'm going to use a different color. Now, if we looked at this all by itself, our cash would be $19 for 2016. Our accounts receivable for this year only is a dollar. Our CIP, if we had not made the adjustment for $6.80 of losses, but only $5.80 of losses. Our billings, $20. Our revenues in excess of billings, a negative of $5.80. Total for the whole year. Notice the tie-in. You can immediately see if we had done the entries only for 2016, we would have had a total tie into revenue. Keep in mind this $59. That $59 compared to the cumulative revenue of $60 is only $1 off. Again, that $1 is because we put an additional $1 of loss into CIP in order to adjust the cumulative contract. You can see how this method would impact CIP 
and also cost of goods sold, and would result in the necessary change to recognize the cumulative loss. What is the second method? In the second method, we record an adjustment to a totally separate account. Let's go back to a clean copy of our chart. Using this method, there is no change to the current year's costs. Instead, we add to the bottom of the chart an addition. The adjustment is for the $1 that we need additional loss this year in order to ensure the cumulative loss is equal to $4. This will create an adjusted gross profit, $6.80. The entry at the end of the period is also different. Our previous entries are still the same, but at the end of the year, we would now do two entries. The debit to cost of goods sold would be for the correct amount of the costs, $21. The credit to revenue would be for the appropriate amount, $15.20. The credit to CIP would be for the current year's losses only, $5.80. Notice that the loss is credited to CIP. Then we would do an additional entry. We would debit expected loss on construction contract, $1. And we would credit CIP for this additional dollar. Notice the credit to the CIP is equal to the same amount as the credit to CIP previously a total of $6.80. However, cost of goods sold remains at its appropriate amount, the amount that was actually incurred this period, $21. The additional $1 adjustment goes into a different expense account. This expense account would be noted underneath cost of goods sold in the income statement. Let's enter these into our T accounts. First, we'd have the $5.80 loss that goes into CIP. Then we would have an additional $1. The end result, $59. This is the same as method one, but the entries are different and how it looks on our income statement is different also. Notice that the balance sheet would still be the same. Cash would be $54, accounts receivable $4, CIP $59, less billings on CIP $58, revenues in excess of billings $1, the total four assets $59. It's the income statement that would look different. A revenue from the long-term contract, $15.20. Cost of goods sold, $21. Expected loss on construction contract, $1. Total costs, $22. Gross profit or loss, $6.80. So, which method is better? Method one or method two? That decision is left to the accountant in ABC Construction and his or her professional judgment. Both methods are totally acceptable. In the next video, we'll be looking at 2017.